Good morning and welcome to Fort Lee. It's an honor for Command Sergeant Major Torres and I to be here today and represent CASCOM and all of our soldiers, Department of the Army civilians, and family members of this event. It's an honor to have you here and to recognize your many years of service to our country. I've been a part of this community for many years, beginning as a student and ROTC cadet at the University of Richmond. I'm also no stranger to Fort Lee, previously serving a two-year assignment here, included in 2017, as a director of CASCOM, Student Abilities Development Integration Director. So it's great for my wife, Cindy, and I to be back in Virginia and at Fort Lee and spend this special day with all of you. Eventually, all of us, drill officers and command sergeant majors included, transitioned from the uniform to a different set of clothes. Both my father and father-in-law each served over 30 years in the Army, and I can to attest to the pride and honor that's felt by our retiree population. They and you truly are soldiers for life. That's why our annual Retiree Appreciation Day is such an important event for us all. It provides the installation and opportunity to bring you up to date on the range of services and programs available on Fort Lee for military retirees and their family members. There are more than 54,000 retirees throughout Central Virginia and portions of North Carolina and West Virginia who use our services here on Fort Lee to support our PX commissary facilities, our FMWR activities, and many other things we do. We have many ways we support you in retirement as well with our clinic, our pharmacy, our ID card office, our retirement service office, and many other places that help you navigate through your benefits as a retiree. Some of you may be a civilian employee who came back for a post-military career. Some may be contractors and others, and others don't have formal jobs, but come on post as a volunteer. Some of you have outside concerns in the civilian world beyond our gates. Regardless of your status, our message to you today is welcome back. We encourage you to watch the following videos to get the latest information on our Soldier for Life services and see what special events we have on base coming up as we show our appreciation for your dedicated and faithful service. Like every year, this event will be a great source of the latest information for you and your family. Every day since you started to serve on active duty, you've been a member of our Army family, and this does not change once you retire. Again, welcome back to Fort Lee. Support starts here, victory starts here, Army strong. Hi, I'm Colonel Jim Hoyman, your Garrison Commander. I am Command Sergeant Major Love, your Garrison Command Sergeant Major. Today we celebrate Retirement Appreciation Day, and of course we want to thank you for what you've done in service to our nation. And I think you probably get a lot of thanks, but I also want to say that we absolutely value who you are and what you do. As part of a garrison, we want to make sure we support you well, and that's something that we're trying to do today, but uh, every day. I do want to emphasize that uh, your participation and who you are is critical to this community. So there's a couple things that we're doing today that I want to make sure that you're aware of, uh, not only today, but this week. Next week, the 26th through the 30th of September, the ID card office will be open for you, dedicated hours from 1300 to 1530. Also today, you will hear from reps from the Army G1. We'll talk about uh, survivor benefits, so you can learn a little bit about that. Sir Major? Today we recognize you for your honorable service. Today you leave a legacy of commitment, self-dedication, and professionalism to our Army and our soldiers. I know that was unlikely sacrifices. Please know that those sacrifices was not unnoticed and they are much appreciated. So thank you for what all you have done throughout your military career for our nation. All right, a couple of things we'd like to highlight. So the Sergeant Major and I last week got to go to a, an event with the governor uh, the event was the Virginia Values Veterans. So there's some legislation here in Virginia that will support some of the things that you're doing as a veteran and some of your benefits. So that's worth looking into, but it is an exciting time to be here. Some other things I just want to highlight. You may have looked in the news. We talked about thanking you and, and appreciating you, but I think one of the things that we can say that why we value you is because you are a huge part of this community and part of the military uh, mission. We have struggled as a military of late, particularly in the Army and the Marine Corps, on recruiting. So I'm asking you to participate in our recruiting effort so that we can meet our mission and make sure that we are establishing a good, positive footing for national security. In closing, thank you for what you've done, who you are, and participating today. We really do want to celebrate you today on Retiree Appreciation Day. Thank you. Hello. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Chris Forster, Deputy Commander for Clinical Services here at Kenner. Kenner takes pride in providing you with a variety of healthcare services, including pharmacy, radiology, internal medicine, 
laboratory services, and many others. For all of our services, please consult our webpage for details and contact information. You can also call the Clinic Information Desk at 804-734-9000. Your care and your trust has and will continue to be our mission. As we return to normalcy in the endemic phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, the best way to protect yourself and others is to receive the vaccine and appropriate boosters based on your age and health status. Be sure to trust reputable sources for information such as the CDC, your local Department of Public Health, or your physician. Once you turn 65, you have the option of remaining here at Kenner for your primary care needs or receiving your care in the civilian network via the use of Medicare and TRICARE for Life. Contact Beneficiary Services here at Kenner for assistance in navigating this important transition. Health Benefit Advisors are located on the second floor and can also be reached by calling 804 734-9447 734-9447 or 9448. Pharmacy services are available for all retirees for free through Maine Pharmacy here at Kenner from 8 a.m. to 1645 every duty day. The patient's DOD ID card must be presented each time a service is requested. The Fort Lee Army Wellness Center provides a variety of services to all retirees and DA civilians. These include our bod pod assessments, health coaching, and a variety of classes. And don't forget TRICARE Online Patient Portal. TRICARE Online is a great way to manage your access to healthcare within the military health system. From TRICARE Online, you can make appointments, request prescription refills, download your medical records, and communicate securely with your provider. Sign up now at TRICAREONLINE.COM. Stay connected with us through our website, Kenner.TRICARE.MIL, or our Facebook, where we routinely post updates regarding clinical services, Facebook.com forward slash Kenner. Now, more than ever, Kenner is proud to serve you and celebrate your service to the nation. Our team stands ready to meet your health care needs, and we look forward to seeing you soon. We wish you the best this Retiree Appreciation Day. Hello, I'm Mark Overberg, the Director of Army Retirement Services at the Pentagon. Thank you for coming out today to your Retiree Appreciation Day. You know, that's important because it demonstrates that you're still engaged and that you're still a member of the team, and that's what we really need. Retired soldiers often ask me what they can do for the Army. What we need you to do for the Army is in the mission statement for retired soldiers. Hire and inspire, which you can see on the slide. The hire part refers to helping veterans get jobs, any way that you can do that. Number two is to inspire Americans who don't understand the military or what we're about. Less than 7% of Americans are now veterans. So we need you to talk about your service and help them understand what it is to be a veteran and how important that is to the nation. The last inspire is to inspire the next generation to join the military as you did. One of the challenges that you'll have in accomplishing this Army mission is that Americans don't know that you're a retired soldier. One way to start conversations with Americans is to self-identify who you are by wearing the Soldier for Life pin or putting the Soldier for Life sticker on your car. Perhaps we should engage the Marines in a friendly competition to see who has more service emblems 
on their cars as we travel down our highways. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you of how to stay in touch and where to get many of your frequently asked questions answered. On my website, which you see the link for on the screen, you can download the U.S. Army Retired Soldier Handbook. You can view the Survivor Benefit Plan videos and briefs. You can read Army Echoes and the Army Echoes blog. I also want to tell you about the My Army Benefits website and the My Air Force Benefits website. In the benefits libraries on these websites, you'll find 180 federal and state benefits fact sheets that explain all of your retirement benefits and also a detailed list of service providers at every Army base as well as links to other services bases. And you don't need to log in to the website, it's open to anyone who visits. And lastly, I'd like to tell you a little bit about your Chief of Staff of the Army Retired Soldier Council. Twelve of the 14 members are nominated by and are members of your local installation retiree councils. You can read what they recommended to the Army Chief of Staff for the 14 issues that were raised from your local councils to the Chief's Council this year. Their annual report is on my website. Just look for the Soldier for Life pin and the Chief of Staff of the Army Retired Soldier Council in the lower right hand corner of the webpage. And I'd really like you to become an active member of your local installation retiree council. There you'll raise the issues of the retired community to your local commanders. And for the issues that they can't address there, they'll be raised up to the Chief's Council where we'll address them by changing Army policy or law as needed. So I really thank you again for coming out today to your Retiree Appreciation Day. It's important that you stay connected with your service and support Americans and the Army. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Fort Lee Retiree Appreciation Day. My name is Patricia Cruz, and I'm the Army Survivor Benefit Plan Program Manager. I work out of Headquarters DA G1 Retirement Services Office. Before we get started, I wanted to just thank you for your service and for all the sacrifices you and your family have made throughout the years. I also wanted to take this time to say thank you to Fort Lee for the invitation to come speak with you today. So today we wanted to go over some of the updates on the SVP program. So let's get started. So here's our agenda for today. We're gonna to go over the purpose of this brief, who needs to be aware, the survivor benefit plan offset by the dependency indemnity compensation phase out, the optional child only annuity and the spouse reversion, how to prepare for these changes and the available resources to you. Today, we wanted to provide you an overview of the National Defense Authorization Act of 2020, which made some significant changes for surviving spouses who are eligible to receive both the Survivor Benefit Plan annuity and the Dependency and Indemnity Compensation. In addition, the NDAA of 2020 also made changes that will affect children and surviving spouses of members who died in the line of duty. These changes were to be implemented over a course of three years and we are in the final phase of that implementation. So today we want to go over what has happened since the start of the implementation and what to expect in the next few months as we enter the final phase. So who needs to be aware of this new law change? There are two main pieces of this law change and we'll break down for you which piece may affect you. So the first one we'll go over is the SBP DIC offset elimination. This has already been implemented and has been phasing out this offset over the last three years. And so some surviving spouses have already seen some changes. 
So the population that needs to be concerned of, of this particular part of the law change are any surviving spouse that's eligible to receive both the SBP and the DIC. Now these surviving spouses can be of retired members or members who died in the line of duty. Some retired members may also need to know about this if they are considering withdrawing from the SBP program because they have a total disability rating uh, by the VA. The reason being is that the total disability rating would equate to a DIC payment for their spouse in the event of their death, and now their spouse will also receive the full SBP annuity starting January 1st, 2023. So the reason to withdraw no longer exists because the offset won't exist starting January 1st of 2023. And lastly, any retiring member with a disability who is considering um, SBP. Now for the optional child only repeal, these will only affect surviving spouses and children of members who died in the line of duty. And we'll go over the specifics on that. So let's go over the phase elimination of the SBP DIC offset first. So as we discussed earlier, NDAA 2020 was published December 20th, 2019, that phases out the elimination of that offset. So under 2020, you'll see a bar graph. And in green is the amount of money that a surviving spouse would receive because DIC offset their SVP dollar for dollar. Okay, so as you can see here, they're not receiving their full SVP annuity. They're gonna receive their full DIC amount, which is in blue, and then the green is what they're receiving from DFAS. Now, in addition to that, because there is an offset, they're also receiving a special payment called the Special Survivor Indemnity Allowance, otherwise known as SSIA, and that is per month. Now, starting December of 2020, spouses who are going to be affected by this law change or who were affected by this law change received a letter um, because starting January 1st, 2021, the offset was not going to be dollar for dollar anymore. It was reduced to only two thirds of the DIC amount. So if you look under the bar graph for 2021, you'll see that the SBP annuity actually increases because only two thirds of the DIC amount offset the SVP annuity. Now, since there's still an offset, SSIA is still paid out and the DIC amount is still paid in full by the VA. In December of 2021, letters went out to the spouses to let them know of the next phase uh, that started January 1st, 2022, where the offset was reduced even further to only one third of the DIC amount. So in the next set of graphs under 2022, you'll see that the SVP annuity in green that gets paid out increases even more. And because the offset still exists, they are still receiving the SSIA payments. And then of course, in blue, the DIC payments from the VA. Now, later on this year in December, uh, letters will go out again to our spouses to let them know that the offset will be eliminated starting January 1st, 2023. That means that they'll receive their SDP annuity in full starting February 1st payment and the DIC payment from the VA won't change. They'll still receive that in full. Now, because there is no offset, that SSIA will go away. So every surviving spouse is going to be a little bit different in, in how much they're gonna get paid and when they'll see their first payment during this implementation. So that first scenario we just went over, that surviving spouse was already receiving a little bit of their SVP annuity, even though they had a full dollar for dollar DIC offset prior to the implementation of the law. In scenario two that we see here, this surviving spouse is eligible to receive an SVP annuity that's less than the full DIC amount, but greater than two thirds of the DIC amount. As a result, the first time they saw an SBP annuity check in addition to their SSIA was in 2021. And this year in 2022, that SBP annuity payment increased. And in 2023, they'll receive the entire SBP annuity in addition to their DIC. Scenario three shows a surviving spouse whose SBP annuity is less than two thirds of the DIC amount. So the first time they saw an SBP payment from DFAS 
um, in addition to their SSIA was this year, 2022. And next year, they'll receive the full SBP annuity amount. What I'm not showing you here is that there are some surviving spouses whose annuity amount is less than one third of the DIC amount. So the first time they will see their SBP annuity check from DFAS will be when we fully implement in 2023. So they'll see on the February 1st check their SBP annuity payment. So now let's switch gears to the optional child only repeal and reversion to spouse. This portion of the law only affects surviving spouses and children of members who died in the line of duty. This does not affect survivors of retired members. Because previous to the law change, spouse SBP was offset dollar for dollar by spouse DIC, the law allowed for the service secretary to elect for optional child only spouse excluded for this population. The reason being, child-only SBP is not offset by child DIC. So as a household, they may receive more money if they elect for a child-only SBP versus the spouse SBP. Now, because that SBP DIC offset will be eliminated starting January 1st, 2023, so will the ability of the service secretary to make that election on behalf of the family. As part of that repeal, any surviving spouses who previously elected or requested to elect child only SBP will have the SBP revert back to them starting January 1st, 2023. Now this will only revert to a spouse who is an eligible spouse. And so an eligible spouse is someone who is alive and has not remarried prior to age 55. So before that can be reverted, DFAS needs to verify eligibility of that surviving spouse. So in November 2021, DFAS sent out letters to the eligible surviving spouses um, that had previously elected or requested to transfer their benefit to child only. Now DFAS has sent out a second round, uh, June of this year, and is currently awaiting those packets. Based on the information they receive, they will send out letters to the children that are affected by this reversion. And those letters should be received fall of this year. And then a third round of letters will go out to possible eligible spouses again um, later on this fall. So every family is gonna be a little bit different. And based off of what DFAS finds, will result in continued payments for a child, suspended payments for a child, or termination of payments to a child. So if there is an eligible spouse, meaning DFAS received an eligibility packet back that shows that a spouse is still an eligible spouse, then the payments for the children will stop and the payments for the spouse will start. And that will be starting January 1st, 2023, but they'll see it in the February 1st payment of uh, 2023. If DFAS receives an eligibility packet back that shows that the spouse is ineligible because they received a death certificate for that surviving spouse or um, a marriage certificate showing that that surviving spouse had remarried prior to age 55, then the children will continue to receive those payments. If DFAS does not receive an eligibility packet either way to know whether the spouse is an eligible spouse or not an eligible spouse, then the child payments will be suspended to prevent overpayment for those children, uh, which would result in a, debt, a possible debt for those children. So if you are a child or a guardian of a child and you don't know the status of a surviving spouse, then you may want to plan on those payments stopping. So again, if you have not received a letter as a child or a guardian of a child, those letters will be coming out this fall. If you are a surviving spouse and you think you should have received a letter and haven't, then there is a link to on the final slide here that you can go to where you can download that eligibility packet. But it is very important that DFAS receive either way, whether, whether you are eligible or not, so that we can continue payments to the children or transfer those payments to a surviving spouse. 
Here are some great resources to give you some more information on what we've discussed today. The first bullet under DFAS or the first link under the DFAS bullet is specific to the SBP DIC offset and will apply to any surviving spouses who are eligible to receive both the SBP and the DIC offset. And these are surviving spouses of retired members and members who died in the line of duty. The second link is specific to the optional child only annuity and the spouse reversion that we just spoke about. If you are a surviving spouse that needs to complete the eligibility packet, you can download it from this link and send it to DFAS as soon as possible. The other resources here include the Military OneSource and the Defense.gov, as well as the DOD Office of Financial Readiness. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to any of our RSOs. They can help you uh, with this topic and then help also with uh, submitting that, app, that eligibility packet to DFAS if the instructions are not clear enough for you. So I wanted to take this opportunity again to say thank you for your service. Thank you for allowing me to be here, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hello, my name is Megan Green, and I'm here today to talk to you about Family and MWR here at Fort Lee. Family and MWR is here for you, the retirees. Almost all of our programs and services are available for you to participate in. Even our logo for Family and MWR points out the fact that we're here to serve both active duty and families, civilians, and importantly, retirees as well. Those who dedicatedly served our nation, we now get the privilege to serve today. I of course wish that we could do this in person, but I'm happy to be coming to you virtually to get you the information. I'm gonna go over a brief introduction of some of the valuable programs that Family and MWR offers to you here at Fort Lee. I also invite you to follow us on Facebook and visit our website, lee.armymwr.com for additional information. And don't forget to download the Digital Garrison app. It's important for us all to stay connected. The Cardinal Golf Club is a great golfing experience with a 27 hole championship golf course, full practice facility, two putt large putting areas, a practice bunker, and a fully stocked pro shop. Lessons are available and it doesn't matter your skill level. Our bowling center provides 32 lanes of fun that await you. There are leagues available and party rooms for gathering. Stop by and learn more today. Our outdoor recreation is a top-notch program and provides trap and skeet, equipment rental, personally owned weapons range, archery, paintball, and so much more. They do adventure programs like kayaking, water skiing, and more. Also, don't forget about their rental center. If you're planning a party or need camping equipment or even lawn equipment, they have it there for you. We have three main fitness centers on Fort Lee for your wellness and exercise needs. McLaughlin Fitness Center, Clark Fitness Center, which is a favorite of our retirees, and the Strength Performance Center. Visit our website to get details for each of these facilities. Now that you have time in retirement, be sure to stop by our leisure travel office. You can save money on amusement parks and movie tickets. They can also help you plan your next vacation. Our hideaway is the rustic bar with a modern twist that includes a large front porch with an 800 square foot deck and large pavilion area. It's also available for private parties year round. The Lee Club is a historic banquet and catering facility. You can cater your party and have receptions there. We're also excited that we're about to host our famous Oktoberfest at the Lee Club on October 15th. Visit our website for ticket details. The Lee Playhouse is a critically acclaimed playhouse that houses theater productions throughout the year. In November, we will have Into the Woods. Be sure to check it out. Season tickets are available. Our community library is located at Army Logistics University on the second floor. You can find periodicals, books, audiobooks, DVDs, and computers. We also have an in-house custom framing and arts and crafts studio. You can map prints, needlepoint pieces, puzzles, certificates, or you can just let them do the work for you, and they do beautiful work. Army Community Service is an important part of Family and MWR. It's a human services organization composed of civilian personnel 
and a staff of dedicated volunteers also. They assist commanders in maintaining readiness of individuals, families, and communities within America's Army by developing, coordinating, and delivering services which promote self-resilience and stability during war and peace. Many of their services are also open to retirees. Again, check out our website for details. Family and MWR has you covered for places to eat on Fort Lee. We have quick service restaurants at the golf club and also at the 10 Strike Bowling Center. We have a wide variety of sandwiches, burgers, and more. As always, make sure you check out our website and Facebook page for details. Again, thanks for being our customers for Family and MWR.